Hello there folks, Ivor Cummins here and today we're diving deep into the fascinating world of Wilhelmer Stefansson, a man whose incredible polar expeditions, study of the Inuit and personal experiments revolutionized our understanding of nutrition. You know Fred, I hear that eating too much red meat is bad for you. What a lot of bug. So fasten your sled, G up your huskies and get ready for a riveting ride through the Arctic. Born in 1879 in Manitoba, Canada, Stefansson was an ethnologist, Arctic explorer and author. He dedicated his life to understanding the Inuit people and their unique dietary habits in one of the harshest environments on Earth. In the realm of human nutrition, few stories are as remarkable and influential as that of Wilhelmer Stefansson. This pioneering researcher took his life in his hands to prove once and for all that mankind could not only survive on meat alone, but could thrive on it. He was the first proponent of a carnivore diet, if you will. And the polar work lasted for how long, sir? I've spent in the uh, Arctic or north of the Arctic Circle about 10 winters and 13 summers. Stefansson's expeditions were nothing short of epic. In 1906 he embarked on a journey to the Arctic that would change the course of his life. Together with his fellow explorer Rudolf Anderson, Stefansson survived the unforgiving conditions of the Arctic for more than a year, living with the Mackenzie River Inuit people and learning the secrets of their survival in such a harsh climate. Imagine subsisting in a place where temperatures can drop well below freezing and the land is often barren. The Inuit people had developed dietary strategies that allowed them to survive the extreme conditions. Stefansson became fascinated by their diet which, for the Mackenzie River people, was salmon, trout and… well that was it, actually. Salmon, trout for breakfast, lunch and dinner. With time he also learned to enjoy the only variation from this mono meal, aged raw cold rotten fish delicacy, which he declared better than camembert. Smell that? Yeah. You know what that is? Fish. What captivated Stefansson's attention was the realization the Inuit had no access to fruits, vegetables or other carbohydrates, typically considered essential for good health. Yet they exhibited robust health, extraordinary endurance and at low rates of chronic disease. In an effort to learn more about the Inuit lifestyle and dietary practices, Stefansson lived with various other people of the Arctic region and adapted to their diet. He and his colleague Anderson dined exclusively on meat and fish for over a year during their 1906 Arctic expedition, eating fish, seals, polar bears, caribou, walrus and any other animals that they could hunt or fish. It's important to note that they ate almost nose to tail, consuming the muscle meat, brain and bone marrow, but not the intestines, which were thrown to the dogs. Lucky dogs. Stevanson learned that fat had to be kept high. If someone in the party relied only on lean meat, illness quickly resulted, though it could be corrected quickly by switching back to a high fat diet. This is also known as rabbit starvation. After surviving this extraordinary journey, Stevanson was inspired to continue his exploration of the Inuit and their diet. In 1913 he set off a second expedition, this time with his indigenous friend and colleague Kalok. This expedition would last for several years and contribute even more to our understanding of nutrition. During this time Stefansson and Kalok again subsisted on a diet primarily consisting solely of animal products and almost totally absent of carbohydrates such as sugar and grains. Over the years he demonstrated repeatedly and conclusively that this way of eating would provide humans with all the essential nutrients they needed to maintain their health and energy in the harsh Arctic environment. After returning from his Arctic adventures, Stefansson sought to validate his findings scientifically. He conducted a series of controlled experiments at Bellevue Hospital in New York City. In these studies he and his colleague Karsten Anderson followed a diet, yet again, almost exclusively of meat and animal fats. 
The results of these experiments were nothing short of astonishing. Stefansson and Anderson were able to verify in their clinical study that they experienced no signs of nutrient deficiency or ill health during their year-long meat-based diet. Stefansson's work was groundbreaking because, despite the absence of fruits, vegetables and grains in their diet, he could prove that the Inuit showed no signs of the nutrient deficiencies or metabolic issues that we see today all around us. This discovery radically contradicted the prevailing belief that humans require carbohydrates to stay healthy. Furthermore, Stefansson's work challenged the prevailing idea that dietary deficiencies such as scurvy were solely due to the absence of fruits and vegetables and vitamin C. In his studies, he noted that the Inuit, who had limited access to such foods, were 100% free from scurvy and other vitamin deficiency diseases, and could get their vitamin C from meat, so long as it wasn't overcooked. <coughs> Stefansson chronicled his experiences, observations and findings in several books, the most notable of which is The Fat of the Land. Stefansson's book sparked significant interest and controversy in the nutrition world. His findings ran counter to the conventional dietary wisdom of the time, which promoted a carbohydrate-heavy diet, and he ended up at loggerheads with John Harvey Kellogg, the inventor of cornflakes and a prominent health advocate of the period. John Harvey Kellogg played a significant role in shaping the dietary trends of the time. He was not only a staunch advocate for vegetarianism, but also a vocal critic of meat consumption, especially when it came to saturated fats. Kellogg viewed vegetables, fruits and grains as virtuous dietary choices, while meat and fats were considered sinful. His beliefs were rooted in religious convictions and were disseminated through his widely read publications and lectures. Can you imagine a time when eating meat could ever be considered sinful or antisocial by the powers that be? I think I'm a vegetarian. Well, I think I'm a vegetable Aryan too. Stefansson's work was a direct challenge to such dogma and represented a serious threat to the status quo, so he faced significant pushback from nutritionists and health professionals of his time. Ignoring his detractors, he embarked on an ambitious series of lectures and public talks to spread the message of the discoveries and challenge the prevailing beliefs. He was a charismatic and persuasive speaker, and his ideas caught the attention of many. His message was clear, humans could indeed thrive on a diet predominantly consisting of animal products. Good evening, Dr. Stephenson. You yourself must have longed for a green vegetable once in a while. Well, I did it first, mm -hmm. and I had to become a guest of the Eskimos, and for four and a half months, I lived on literally nothing but fish and water. And at the end of four and a half months, I was healthier than I'd never been before. And this is on an exclusive meat diet? That was exclusive fish in this case. Fish. I have since then spent more than six years on red meat. That is, uh, seal meat, caribou meat, muskox meat, polar bear, grizzly bear, and so on. You have to have fat with a lean. Uh, lean and fat together uh, make a perfect diet. Now fast forward to today and we see Stefansson's work vindicated by modern science. Research on low carbohydrate and ketogenic diets have shown their effectiveness in managing weight, improving metabolic health and even treating certain medical conditions. Stefansson's legacy can be seen in the resurgence of interest in meat-based diets, low-carb eating and ketogenic diets. These dietary approaches align with the principles he observed among the Inuit and documented in his experiments. Ketogenic diets, which are extremely low in carbohydrates and high in fats, have been used successfully to manage conditions like epilepsy, diabetes and obesity. They work by shifting the body's metabolism to burn fat for energy instead of carbohydrates. This shift to fat-based metabolism, known as ketosis, is something Stefansson observed in the Inuit and experienced himself during his Arctic expeditions. It's a phenomenon that is now being harnessed for its therapeutic potential in various medical and dietary contexts. In our modern world, many people find success in finding a balance between meat-based diets and plant-based foods, and that can be fine, if it's working for you.
But if you find yourself piling on the pounds or your doctor tutting your test results, it might be time for you to rebalance things and go without those carbs for a while. Think of it as pressing the reset button. So there you have it folks, Wilhelmer Stefansson's extraordinary expeditions, study of the Inuit and personal experiments have left an indelible mark on the world of nutrition. His legacy continues to influence our understanding of dietary choices and their impact on human health. A true legend in his own lunchtime. Thanks for joining me on this journey through the life and work of Wilhelmer Stefansson. If you found this exploration as fascinating as I did, please hit that like button, subscribe and share this video with your friends. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning and keep thriving.